This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three. There was a young lady of Cork whose pa made a fortune in pork. He bought for his daughter a tutor who taught her to balance green peas on her fork. It's the Maastricht edition. That limerick has nothing to do with anything that we're talking about tonight. But there we are. <laughs> so take Good that. evening, everybody. Welcome to the Maastricht edition. Hello. Good evening. Well, we're starting it's... off with a bit of culture there. The a bit of poetry. Culture. Yeah. Yeah. Poetry, yes. It's as good as any intro we've ever had, so... <laughs> there once was a young man named Enos who Uh-oh. who loved this show. So watch it. You're, yes. Yes. I, yeah. got, I got nothing. No, sorry. Hi, Mom. Didn't quite work as well, that one. Who yeah, had a very large vocabulary. Oh, indeed. Yes. <laughs> oh, anyway, we're, we're, we're off to a Hello, roaring start. <laughs> Hope you're uh, all having a very nice uh, evening, wherever you are tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, We've got a fun-packed show ahead of us this evening. We've got Charlotte from the Broth Bar, who's Mm going to be joining us later. Um, Charlotte um, has been on the show before, but she's going to be giving Mm -hmm. us an update as to what's been going on over the last few months. Yes. And we've got our usual fun and games. We've got our um, Tracy's Titty Bitties. We've got Matt Goes Dutch. Although I've got a feeling maybe we should call it Matt Goes dot, 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 dot at the moment. Because it seems to have taken a rather left I want to become more right turn, right right turn. Right. I don't know where I am. It's <laughs> taken a turn. Let's just say that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it has. Yes. It has. It's, it's gone on a detour. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, and we've got this day in history. But we've also got flowers. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Plats. We're so, having a flowery yeah. theme. We have. I didn't. And a mouse. Why? Why are we doing this again? Well, th- this is because during um, the lockdown stroke quarantine over the last uh, few months, a lot of people have turned to gardening. Mm-hmm. And uh, I found a love for gardening, which, of course, is very therapeutic. Yes. Um, and with us all trying to be a little bit greener, mm. um, also it's uh, very uh, healthy because you can grow your own tomatoes and mm-hmm. cucumbers and beans and whatever you like. So th- These are sweet beans in my garden. So therapeutic in the way that you can't Beautiful. like murder people, but plants killing plants is okay. That, you that can murder thing? people and bury them in the garden because Great of compost. all the digging that you've been doing. You can, you you've go. probably got really good at it, and you can bury them underneath your sweet peas. This is why my sweet peas are so glorious. So interpol now, you know where to do it. It's like like some C three standards or something. <laughs> Uh, what flowers have you got there, Tracy? Well, I have got these beautiful geraniums from the garden. Now, I love geraniums. I have mostly geraniums in flower. I I just think they're so beautiful, especially when they hang out of uh, window boxes and things like that. And yeah. the, So I've got that. And I've also got, this is baby fern. And this is the, the house plant. And there's also daddy fern, but he's too big to put on the table. So I just have baby fern and the geraniums. This well, evening. You know, and and mousy and little mousy. Mousy is hiding there in the geraniums. Yes. There. Geraniums are great. There's, there's a Beautiful. wide variety of geraniums and they're quite a hardy little uh, flower, actually. They uh, are. They, yeah. These guys, they died in the winter and came back to life again. Yeah. I didn't do anything and they smell so beautiful it's really you'll probably find most gardens or window boxes uh, around maastricht will have a geranium of some sort in them that's for sure beautiful now jason what have you got me i'm a blossoming flower you're i think you've got something you've got something behind you i think uh well that oh no the the greenery back there has nothing to do with Meet what meet is that, Mr. Mr. Avocado? Look at Hello, that. Hello, Mr. That's avocado. I hate that avocado. That is really impressive. Now, did you grow that from an avocado stone, Indeed. or did you actually buy that? You did. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, just to, um, to prove that I could do it, basically, because I, because avocado is disgusting. Fight me on that. One. <laughs> he doesn't it's, like avocado. No, he it, does. It, it, I love it, avocado. It is the consistency of of hand moisturizer. It's lotion. It's it's disgusting. It's uh, it's squirting uh, squirting hand moisturizer in your mouth. Hey, well, fight me, fight me on this. It's it's well, okay. No, I, t- I tell you what I would do actually, Jason, is if you actually did smother yourself in avocado, I would lick it off because I love My- avocado. Wow. 
<laughs> I would like to <laughs> tune in next week. <laughs> it's going to be getting a call from my from a divorce lawyer. Followers. I think that's that's weird. Anyway, <laughs> Matt, let's change skin. the subject. It's very right. good for your skin. Avocado. Yes, it is. It's full sure. of full of very good oils. It's very good. Avocado it. shampoo. There you go. Look at your oh, hair. Good. Look how much it grows. Yeah, you, okay. you, you were a skinhead last week. <laughs> a little bit of yes. avocado shampoo. Now, what, what have you got there, Matt? I have my baby orange tree. Ooh. Well, actually, it's a blood orange tree because I grew it from a blood orange pip during uh-huh. the And now I have this. Lovely. Yeah, hold on a minute. I seem to remember that you had, was it oranges or lemons, that you had on your um, balcony when you were I living in I still have Australia. a lemon tree, yeah. You, Still have a lemon tree, okay. Still lemon tree. That's still going strong. So you're hoping to get, get blood oranges now? In like ten years, maybe. <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, all it needs is a sunny spot. Yeah, also. it lives in the kitchen window, so all right. Perfect. No, I think that's. I also have a grapevine now as well. Ooh. Nice. Yes, we've got one in the garden, but we don't eat the grapes. To be honest with you, we should be making wine from them. There's, yeah, you're missing a trick there, Joe. I know. I don't yeah. Know what the, yeah. What the yeah I'm very good at drinking it, not so much at making it. No. <laughs> but just... For anybody out there who does want to grow anything, um, and especially if you want to grow something from the uh, vegetable or fruit side, I would certainly recommend um, tomatoes are very easy. Mm. Courgettes are extremely easy, and you just need one plant. And if you've got a pot about yay big and you put your courgette plant in there, it will just keep producing courgettes from really? now until, uh, yeah, until autumn. Um, you'll have so many that you'll end up making soup and all kinds of stuff from it. They're well, brilliant. I, I love a courgette. I'm a huge courgette fan. I, I, I think I drove one of those once. Ah, oh, oh. Corv. Cor- Corvette. Oh, sorry. Close. Uh, Close, yeah. 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 I, yeah. You guys, I'm, yes, I'm well out of this too. conversation. I, I don't little know what's red going on. Courgette. <laughs> and also chilies. Chilies ah, as well. Yeah. So yeah. you can stick them on your windowsill and they will grow like Billio. You know what? You know what actually grows much easier than all of that? Weeds. Well, um, we yeah. oh, don't, don't get me started. So on I weeds. would say oh, I would suggest God. to anybody who just if you if you don't feel that you have a green thumb, just let your yard go. Half my That's life is, is 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 picking out uh, weeds. Drives me nuts. Mm. But I'll tell you who doesn't drive me nuts. Adam. Adam's in the house. Hi, Adam. Hey. Hello, Adam. He's he's not. Uh, now hold on a minute. He says courgettes. You say zucchini. Ah, uh-huh. uh, it's one of those American English British uh, yeah. things. And yeah. And cucumber. Uh, yeah. And we know he's he's British actually. Egg, egg so plant. what's the, yeah uh, What what do we do? Oh, we were just, uh, we were just yes. talking oh, about vegetables. Aubergine. I love an aubergine as well. I love <gasps> the most aubergines. So I get good. very excited just looking at them. Mm. Oh right. <laughs> just, well just because of the colour. Yes. But they're very beautiful. Yes, nice and shiny. Uh-huh. Paul's in the house. Hi, Paul. Hello, Paul. Tell us, Paul, do you like courgettes? Or aubergine. Or aubergine. We're, we're, we're equally fond of both. <laughs> Eggplants or zucchini. Hannah's with us. Hi, Hannah. We're talking courgettes. Tell us, do you like a courgette? Do you grow <laughs> courgettes? Yeah. Hard, hit, out there, hard hitting us, journalism from the Master Wow. Yeah. We've hit an all time <laughs> high, guys. <laughs> Do you grow well, hemp? Not Do you want to reach an all-time size. high? Talk to us. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, got, I got nothing here. That was a song from a James Bond movie. Which one? What was the song? All-time high. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know this song. Oh, yes, you do. I don't. Yes, you do. Why? Yes, you do. I don't. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask our viewers out there. All-time high is the theme tune to which Bond movie? I'm not going to tell you who it's by, but it is from a Bond movie. A bondage Curious. movie. Which bondage movie is Joe talking about? <laughs> I'm just going to have a sniff of my sweet peas. Do you sniff your sweet peas. That, there's something yeah. else I wanted to talk about this evening. What's that? Uh, because there was a, a very interesting report that came out mm. um, with the title, Ice Cream In personal hygiene out 
And it turns out that people People working from home have been eating more ice cream but neglecting their grooming habits. <gasps> from wow. the news agency, duh. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. I mean, that's, uh, that's, I, a, that's a normal occurrence, really. I mean, yeah. You, Unilever have, uh, have said that their uh, um, ice cream sales have gone up by 26% in the last three months. Gross. But the demand for shampoo and deodorant has fell considerably. <laughs> well, yeah. well, you are. Well, if you're just sitting around the house all day, you do need to wash less, to be honest, like compared it's... to like cycling to the office or something. Well, I think um, our partners probably get used to our smell, don't they? <laughs> That's a nice thought. Yes, but you're probably right, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think we. I think we're we're probably eating more ice cream. Definitely. I don't and, have and a freezer. Smelling our partners more. Yeah. Ice cream and ice cream and smells. That's that's what we're talking about on the Maastricht edition today. Yep, and courgettes. <laughs> and aubergines. Yeah, and just put, put all that together. It's, again, hard-hitting journalism is what we're talking about. Fabulous, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, I suppose if anybody's going to write a, a, a book or a film about what's happened in 2020, the title could be Ice Cream and Body Odor. <laughs> that will sell. Such a thriller. Gelato yes. and Smells, part two. <laughs> yeah, there's your blockbuster right there. Wow. <laughs> all right, you're just going to get but Tom anyway, Hanks how, how is everybody? Have you had a good week? How's your week been, Tracy? Yes, it's been fine. Oh, well, that's all right. Then. <laughs> it hasn't been terribly exciting. Um, what have I done this week? Oh, my goodness. It's, it's trying to track back. I went out for dinner yesterday, which was oh, nice. Yes. So I went out with a, with a friend of mine, another Irish friend. So that was quite cool. So we got to chat about uh, all things uh, Emerald Isle related. Um, what else? I also did um, an, another interview for our YouTube channel. Lovely. <laughs> that there so stay tuned for that it was with the lovely Marie Lormo so we can see uh, in a, in another week or so uh, the result of that so hopefully people will enjoy it and for the rest I've been I have actually been in the garden quite a bit uh, pottering about and stuff and doing a bit of photography a bit of writing just kind of general stuff along with working as well the work from home continues you know nice. and, and Matt it's been well. how about you what did I do this week I'm legal now well, I was before, yes. but I went for my, uh, I went for my Happy biometric, biometric, um, passport. Yeah. Right. The Dutch, oh. the Dutch um, residency resident or... permit. That's the word, right, residency. Yes. <laughs> well, residency. well. So that's finally done, so I can stay another five years. So. Oh, well, that's congratulations. Yeah. That was the excitement of my week. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jason, was, how about you? Can you oh, top that? No, no, I've, I've got nothing to top that. I'm, I'm not legal, nor do I have residency. So, hey, well, it's, enough of that then. Yeah, <laughs> let's yeah. let's try Joe. Maybe in in her square, there's something going on. Well, I did actually have, have a letter from um, the IND, which is the Immigration <laughs> Service, of course. Yeah. I was about to say, did you have a letter from America? No, uh. I didn't. Uh, it's <laughs> the <laughs> No. Never uh, mind. All oh, right. Uh, they already have my biometrics. Do they? I'm, I'm, I am. I am biometric tinted already. So um, they were just sending me a letter to say that going to uh, extend my, my residency. Uh, so uh, all is well. Have you ever had to do the the fingerprint thing? And you had to do every finger and your thumb. Yes. Yeah, you have to do them all at the same time, like two of them at once. It's really hard to put your thumbs like that. Oh, Matt, what a really difficult. How, how does that go? Show us again, Matt. Yeah. Thumb, thumbs down. Thumbs down. Okay. <laughs> it's really hard. Well, I find okay. it really hard. I'm doing it right now. It's okay. <laughs> oh do you have strange thumbs? Maybe I do. I don't know. They're not normal. Do you, do you have strange <laughs> thumbs? Call us now. Right. Right. I do. Send us pictures of your thumbs. Let's yeah. compare thumbs. Oh, God. Thumbs. No. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Joe. You know Cats we're not. We, you know we're not going to get pictures of thumbs. Is that is that the goal? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Is that what you're looking for? I wonder what you would get if you actually googled weird thumbs. Uh, oh gosh! You get me going to the background is what you get. So <laughs> I'm I'm leaving you to this one. He's out of it. <laughs> we'll see you later, Jason. <laughs> 
So, um, uh, so yes, yeah, um, I can't even remember doing that. I know I have done it, but I can't remember doing it. And I can't remember whether it was difficult to do, but I'm sure you're absolutely right. It's awkward. But um, I think I have perfectly normal thumbs and um, my, my <laughs> this is my problem. <laughs> See, it's awkward. <laughs> but too much cushioning. Too, yes. too many boobs get in the way. Way. this is the problem with a lot of things you should see me try to play golf <laughs> <laughs> i know the feeling <laughs> it's, it's carnage i aim in that direction and the ball goes in that direction because <laughs> yeah trying to swing no it's yeah but i've never um, played golf i don't see the point look when i say play Playing golf, that's a bit of a stretch. Pitch, oh, pitch, 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 pitch. Pitch. <laughs> that is a bit different, yes. But it's, it's still need, it still requires a swing. Right. And it's the swinging action that I struggle with. <laughs> Actually, crazy golf. I remember playing crazy golf as a kid. Yeah, I think crazy golf still exists, doesn't it? That's where you've got to go yeah, through I little... I played it a few years ago. Do they have Does that here? Been... I, have, I don't recall ever seeing yes, that. Yes, it's it? called it something inappropriate in English, isn't it? Oh, is it? Oh, no, yeah. literally, it's called something inappropriate in English golf. No, it's. I, I don't. I don't like saying it, so I'm not going to say it. But if you look it up, it's like. Oh, it's Hang called on, that. I'll look it up. Oh, is it? Okay. Yes, I think I know what you mean. Yes. Hmm. Well, Adam. Adam is um, giving us um, war and peace here, as far as uh, oh, right. <laughs> his experience with the biometrics. He's done his biometrics. He's feeling very relieved. Um, right. I'm sure those two things are connected. And, um, and and he did have a little bit of trouble with his fingers, um, his little finger, to be precise. So you yeah. had trouble with your thumbs, and Adam oh, had okay. trouble with his little fingers. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, you play piano. <laughs> I mean, I you, should, I you should be fairly limble. I think it was like the, the spacing of the, the machine. Like you had to like do it in a certain measurement and it was just awkward. Oh. And the false finger is also really awkward because you can't put the other fingers down. It's just like, eh. <laughs> what did, do you know what I mean? Like, were, like the, yeah. the fourth one doesn't uh. go down on its own. Like uh. the others go with it. And it's, uh. Yeah, uh. I'm <laughs> watching me doing is having a great time. I like, oh. is, Donna, is the word so midget? Hello, Donna. And a very special good evening to Lewis. Lewis says hello. hello Thank Lewis. you, Lewis. Lovely to have you with us. Hope you're having a lovely evening. He probably was till he tuned in. <laughs> He's like, oh my God, what the hell is this? Yeah, well, we're. Um, we're, we're all going to be talking about things gardening this evening as well. So yeah. anybody who's just joined us, if you've got any uh, plants that you're growing in the garden at the moment, maybe you've grown them from seed. We'd love to hear about them. Mm -hmm. Please do send us some pictures. These are my sweet peas. We've got uh, an avocado plant. We've got a blood orange plant. We've got geraniums. We've got a baby fern. Any, anybody out there with and some... Our uh, fan Susan from Australia is telling us she grew a lovely little yellow squash. Oh! oh. Oh, that was quite Hello, Australia. How cute yes. is that? Good morning, Australia. Good morning, <laughs> Australia. Du point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Actually, Australia see, uh, uh, scores very well in the Eurovision Song Contest, don't they? Yes. They, they, they yes. do quite well. Why they're in the... Uh, this is no offense it was, to Mrs. It was Marshall, for an anniversary, who, is, who is with us yeah, at the yeah. moment, but we don't actually understand why you're in the Eurovision Song Contest, but it's nice to have you. Aren't it they all is. descendants of, of European origin? That's probably true. Yeah, possibly. It's a lot of people watch the Eurovision in Australia. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The now, wasn't it Australia where they were like swaying on sticks? Yes, wasn't she fabulous? That was cool. Yes. Yeah. That was really cool, yes. They're bringing out some cracking songs, actually. So, uh, yeah, yes. Absolutely. I do feel, though, it could be a little problematic, though, if they win one year, because, of course, the following year they're supposed to host it. Yes, I don't see a problem. I would travel. 
I would go, even if I didn't have a Eurovision ticket. Oh, <laughs> I haven't been down under since 2008, so I would love an excuse to return oh, and visit. Uh, if, we, if we were in the studio, we would be playing music now, and we could play down under by we would do, 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 or something from uh, Midnight Oil. They're also very good. Ozzy, uh, Kylie or Nick Cave. Oh, there's so many to choose. Kylie, Kylie. what about Kylie? <laughs> yes, we love Nick, Kylie. You have Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds as well. Well, I do in any case. You got a thing for him, have you? I do. I like him. Where do we sleep? That's because he's a naughty boy. <laughs> He's a little bit dirty, isn't he? He's a very naughty boy. He is a little bit dirty. I'll tell you who else is a little bit dirty. Andy Madison. He's just joined us. He's a bit of a dirty boy. Is he a friend of yours, Joe? No, never heard of him in my life. <laughs> well, that's, that's how you get viewership right there. We know. Uh, I, I do know this young man, and he's actually in Madeira. Ooh, where they make that lovely uh, wine. wine. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Nice. It's a beautiful place. I don't, has anybody ever been? Sadly not. I have. I do have a bottle of Madeira in my kitchen, though. <laughs> well, that's close enough, isn't it? It's very hilly. Yes. But it's very nice. It's very beautiful. nice. Eric's in the house. Good evening, Eric. Nice Hello, to have you with Eric. us. Eric. Very nice. Well, you've joined at a very good time because yes. I think uh, probably what we should be doing is um, maybe just taking it down a tone or two, just relaxing, um, kettle on, or maybe. Have a glass of Prosecco, if I may. Mm -hmm. Grab your Four, plants. Five. Grab your plants, yes, because they're all very zen-like, can't they? They're, they're good at uh, uh, giving you a calming kind of mood. Yes, yeah. okay, I'm going to grab the fern then. Grab your fern. I'll grab, I'll there grab you the fern. <laughs> there's, that, there's, there's something I never thought I'd say. <laughs> there's something for your T-shirt. Grab your fern. <laughs> Anybody who's next to a fern, grab, grab your fern. Barry's just joined us. Grab your fern. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got a fern, Barry? <laughs> if not, you're missing out. <laughs> yeah, go and get a fern. No, stay where you are. No, he has to stay in. Now listen. time to grab your ferns, relax, get all zen like, because it is time for this, this day in history. history. Oh, the excitement of it all. Today, oh, this week. I think that was our best so far. Yeah. It's taken us long enough, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Ten shows, you know. <laughs> it's a whole new medium, Joe. <laughs> Today is Thursday, the 23rd of July. Oh, 23rd of July. Won't it be August soon? Oh, my God, August. Oh, August. August. What, Five what? months till Christmas. Oh, shush. <laughs> shush. On Thursday, the 23rd of July in 1570. Mm -hmm. William of Orange's troops occupy Ramond. Oh, oh, that's just down the road. It's not far from here. Now, <laughs> Tracy, yeah. you've travelled far and wide. <laughs> well, outside of Netherlands, in any case. <laughs> Have you been to Ramond? I have not been to Rouermond, no. <laughs> oh, no, wait. I may have been. Do they have an outlet centre there? They do. do have an outlet centre. I believe I may have been to the outlet centre about nine years ago. Oh, well, that's a true representation yeah. of Rouermond, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. It's little Germany there. Yeah. Is it's it? Just full of Yes, it's full of Germans. All the Germans China come over because it's literally just across the border. And yes. it's open on a Sunday. Ah, Germany is closed still for many years. Uh, the whole of Sundays. Germany is closed on a Sunday, so they all come over. But yes, William of Orange was occupying Raymond. Ah. Now, in 1664, on this very day, four British ships to drive out or uh, the Dutch out of New York arrive in Boston. Oh, now, really? I'm going to refer to our resident historian here, Matt, uh -oh. because I think he's got some information about this. Yes, so new, <laughs> new, the New Netherlands, as it was called at the time, was they were at war with the British at the time, and it's part of the I think it's the Second or Third Anglo-Dutch War because they were always a bit like eh, don't really like you because eh, we were right opposite the Channel, mm -hmm. so big trading people. So there was a lot of toing and throwing, and eventually the British and uh, the Duke of York, future James II, 
uh, invaded New York, took it over, New, New Netherlands took it over, and it was renamed New York after the Duke of York who invaded it, and has been called New York ever since. And it was what? a British colony before becoming currently America. Wow. Well, there you go. There you go. Thank you, Matt. No worries. So, on this day in 1829, William Austin Burt patterns the America's first typographer. Do you know what a typographer oh. is? Is that the person who takes notes in the legal court? You don't actually patent a person, no. <laughs> no <it's... laughs> then I don't know. It's actually a typewriter. Well, that's what I was, that's what I meant. It's, it's the typewriter a, thing. No, it's a, an actual typewriter. Oh, I see. But it was the called a machine. typographer. Oh, oh. Yes, it was, also, it was originally called a typographer. And now it's a typewriter. Yes. So there you go. Now, I, I remember when I was at school, when I first learned how to type, it was on a typewriter. Mm -hmm. And I, I? I do still recall those first lessons where my teacher is sort of like, making me hold my fingers in like a, a claw position and having to press hard down on the keys. And those first few lessons were very, very painful, learning mm. how to uh, touch type. But, so of course, uh, kids these days, they wouldn't know a typewriter if it fell out of the sky and landed on the head. They'd feel it, obviously. Yeah, yeah, go, it's quite, what quite the hell was that? If I actually conscious. have an old school typewriter. I bought one once at a flea market. It's beautiful. Yeah, it still works. Oh. Everything you've got—it's the old school ones where you had to put the ribbon in and you twist the yeah. ribbon and you yeah. move it on. So it's yeah. really yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. The only problem is it's an azerty keyboard and not a qwerty, so it's very oh. tricky to type on. The other one anyway. is it collects a lot, lot of dust. Oh, it does. It's insane. It it's is. like a magnet for dust. It should have been called magnet for dust, not a type. Yeah, this is why I do not have one. Well, yeah. that's not the only reason. But um, in 1872, on this very day, African American inventor Elijah McCoy is also granted a patent for a lubricator. Oh, for so what? Would you like to know what kind of lubricator? Oh, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes Joe. <laughs> it's for a steam engine. Oh. Right. Very helpful. Well, I think so. Yes. Yes, it's for a steam engine. I like a steam engine. Oh, I wondered where that was going for a moment, actually. <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, who, who doesn't like a steam engine? Who does? We all like a steam engine. We do. And we've and our trains. You have to lubricate your steam engines, otherwise uh, they're not going to work. That's In 1877, the first telephone and telegraph line in Hawaii was uh, completed on this ah. very day. We've got uh, another patent here on this day in 1888. John, John, sorry, John Boyd Dunlop applies to patent what? Could it be a tyre? A pneumatic tyre, absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. They're still going very, very strong, of course. Yes, they are. Now, we were talking about ice cream earlier. <gasps> we love ice cream. In 1904, on this very day, the ice cream cone was created during the St. Louis World Fair. <laughs> now, the cone, the cone as we know it, the one the from 1999. The today, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, wow. I, I quite like a cone. I love a cone. What about you, Matt? As long as it's not those cheap ones that taste like cardboard. It's one of those, like, wafery ones, then, yeah. What about, mm. like, the Cornetto style? Yeah, they're nice. Yeah. I like With the Cornetto. chocolate. Mm. Yeah. I like a Cornetto. Oh, you can I'm just... Actually, now, I'm just going to say this, because with any luck, Lidl will actually send me a ton of them. But uh, Lidl have lemon ones. You can get a box of six for about uh, a euro 35. <gasps> and they're very, very lemony. They're mm. very nice. Very mm. nice. Just what you nice. want. Nice. A, a little bit of freshness in your mouth, actually. Yeah, I can imagine, yes. Well, I'm I'm a Stratiocelli girl all the way. If I'm not having uh, any nice. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I do like Stratiocelli. Uh, in 1967, on this very day, the first successful liver transplant plant on a 19-month-old Julie Rog Redis was successful, uh, mm. carried out by Dr. To Stasi at the University of Colorado, and in 1981, the 14th San Diego Comic Con International opened. Now that's in 1981, and that was the 14th. Mm. So it had been going for quite some time. Yes. And I suspect um, when it when it first started, 
it was probably just all about Star Trek these days, of course. Things oh, about so Star many Trek things. and Star Wars, but there's all the Marvel comic characters. Yes, and DC Comics. DC <laughs> and, Comics, everybody getting Bank to Star. Yeah, we, we have to go to one of these one, one year for sure. We do. Yeah. Go I, to I, the Dutch Comic Con when it's on next year. Well, yes, as, as long as we can do it without a mark. Otherwise, it's a bit pointless. <laughs> Although the the irony is that many of the costumes you would wear would perhaps. Yeah. Not, but oh, well, that's true. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah, but that's, anyway, that's very true. In two thousand and eight, on this day, Cape Verde joins the World Trade Organization and becomes its hundred and fifty third member. Oh. And in two thousand and ten, One Direction is formed during the oh. X Factor show in the UK. Is that the guy with Harry Styles who went solo after? Yeah. They- they all went solo. Did they? I only know mm. Harry Styles. I think pretty much they've all, all gone solo. Yeah, I think they did. Yeah. Liam. Oh, here we go. Oh. Niall. Yeah. Niall. Yeah. That's the Irish one, isn't it, Niall? Oh, Niall Horan. Well, Niall yeah. is an Irish name, isn't it? It is, yes. Not Zane. Zane Malik. Zane yeah. Malik. Is that all of them? I don't know. No, I have no idea. One. Harry. No, you got Harry, yeah. You, Harry, you, you Niles, Liam, Harry. Zane, Harpo, Who's the other one? Louis, Mark, Louis, Louis, Louis Tomlinson. Uh, God, it's like name of the Seven Dwarfs, isn't it? <laughs> Zeppo. I, Se- I hope. <laughs> Indeed. Groucho. <laughs> Oh dear. And finally, on this day in 2019, Nike's Jordan brand mm. signs Zion Williamson. Mm-hmm. To a multi-year sponsorship deal that is estimated at seventy-five million dollars over seven years. Oh. That's kind of lot of quite a lot of ready change. That one, isn't it? Just for just for wearing a bit of Nike, I could do that. But that's the that's the world of endorsements, isn't it? My it goodness. is, isn't it? Yeah, my goodness, not a basement. My goodness. Right, let's do a few birthdays. On this day, 1947, David Essex, the English Cockney vocalist. Hold me close, don't let Let me go. go. (laughs) Yep, that's him. (laughs) It's probably only you and me who knows who that is. 1961, Woody Harrelson, the American actor, was born. Uh, here's, uh, here's somebody who's uber cool. In 1965, Slash, the English-American oh, rock guitarist from uh, Guns N' Roses, cool. it's his birthday. He was actually born in London, you know. Was he? How old is he today? Uh, he was born in 65, so he will be 55. Wow. What's his yeah. real name? Sol Hudson. There you go. Oh, wow. Wonder why he called himself Slash. Do we know? Really cool. Because Saul isn't as <laughs> you can't be a shredder. Saul. Saul. I only know Better Called Saul, which is that Netflix program, the spin-off from Breaking Bad, but never mind. Carry on, Joe. <laughs> um, in 1967, uh, the dearly departed Philip Seymour Hoffman, the American actor, was born. Um, so 1971, Alison Krauss, the American bluegrass musician, and finally the adorable. Daniel Radcliffe was born in 1989. Oh, Mr. Harry, Harry Potter. Potter <laughs> so happy birthday, Harry Potter. Happy birthday to anybody. Happy birthday. birthday today. Hope you're all having a lovely day, whatever it is. And that was this day in history. Well done, darling. Very nice, as always. Thank you very much. Cheers. cheers. Oh, yes. Cheers. Chin, chin. <laughs> ah. Um, before we um, uh, go on to the news, I was wondering, mm-hmm. Matt, um, oh. what do you know this week that you didn't know last week? Ah. Oh, I'm glad you asked me that. I've got a great one. Oh. I was listening to a podcast today about conspiracy theories. Oh. Not because I like them, because the person doing it, um, what was the name? You ever watched um, Gogglebox, the UK program? No. Oh, you won't know who it is anyway. But she's really funny. I only watch it because of her, because not because of the conspiracy theories. But anyway, the conspiracy theory <laughs> is that the Queen is a lizard. <gasps> well, that's a statement. The, the theory goes that these alien lizards invaded Earth like hundreds of years ago and mated with the elite people of the time. And now there's like these 
human lizard cyborg people who are all at the top and the queen's one of them uh this wow. is a doctor who episode <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you can't disprove it no. <laughs> no the funny thing is the first time i heard this theory i was in manchester and we were looking around the cathedrals it's like nine o'clock in the morning so i'm looking around and this man like beckoned us over he's like come here come here we're like uh okay so we went over to this man and there was this big painting and he was like see that woman she's a lizard and we're like Okay, and then as he got closer, you could smell the alcohol on him, like nine o'clock in the morning. And you could see a dry bit of sick down his mouth. <laughs> oh, and like, oh my God, how do we get away from him? Quick. And then we just how didn't shake him away? off. He just followed, he just followed <laughs> us out of the turf and just kept saying, you know what, the queen's a lizard. I was like, okay, we have to go now. And then quickly got away from him. And then the next people behind us got stuck with him. So I don't know what happened. Maybe he there. was a lizard. Maybe, maybe. he was. Maybe, maybe yeah. when you get get that close to a lizard you're actually smelling lizard odor rather than Maybe that's um, what it yeah. was yeah. lizard odor it's a well documented that <laughs> there you go um, mm -hmm. if anybody out there has had any experiences with uh, lizards please do let us know <laughs> so Karina, much information us. hello Karina, Karina you're just in time for the news because ah! Tracy now is going to be doing the news oh yeah <laughs> Tracy with the news. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's July 23rd and you're watching the Maastricht edition. First, a look at your weekend weather and it currently looks set to remain changeable over the coming days with a mix of sunny spells and localized showers. Temperatures will be around 24 degrees. Now moving to your roundup of local and domestic news and stories about the safest countries for driving, Arriva disruptions and nominations for St. Petersburg. But first, Schiphol plans to eventually get rid of physical passport control checks by border security officers. Instead, travellers will be checked remotely in a hallway without having to remove their travel documents from their pocket or bag. It's not yet clear when the switch will happen, however. The further development of the current passport scanners will still continue and is also in line with the border security plans. About one quarter of museums in the Netherlands are in danger of having to close permanently within a year due to the coronavirus crisis. Months of forced closure and fewer visitors means they are getting deeper into financial trouble. The Museum Association has called on the government to make a more comprehensive aid package available, regardless of the size or the location of the museum. And due to safety concerns, high street retail giant Hema has issued an urgent recall for its Four Seasons baby sleeping bag. A manufacturing error could result in the pull of the zipper coming loose and becoming a choking hazard. The sleeping bags have the product numbers 33.39, 5511 and 5512. Hema asks all customers who have purchased such a sleeping bag to return it immediately for a refund. A receipt is not necessary. In other news, the Dutch town of Nieuwegein near Utrecht has severed its twin city status with Polish city Puave after it established itself as a gay-free zone. Following recent elections in Poland, 100 Polish mun municipalities have installed a number of anti-LGBTQ policies. The city of Puave, 130 kilometers outside of Warsaw, has enjoyed a partnership with Nieuwegein for 26 years. In other news, and on average, the eating habits of Netherlands residents are unhealthy and unsustainable. For more sustainable eating patterns, residents need to eat less meat and waste less food. The government also needs to do more to influence these habits. On average, residents of the Netherlands eat 98 grams of meat per day, which is well over the 70 grams advised by the Health Council. And a new report has the Netherlands in the top five safest countries in Europe for driving. Sweden had the lowest number of fatalities and Romania experienced the most. That said, the report has also revealed that the number of fatalities due to traffic accidents across Europe has fallen significantly in the last 20 years. The top five countries for safe driving are Sweden, the United Kingdom, Denmark, the Netherlands and Ireland. And due to work on the track, there will be disruption to Arriva trains from July 30th to August 9th. The impacted routes from Maastricht Central Station include trains to Maastricht Randwijk, Maastricht Nord, Valkenburg and Heerlen. For travellers who still need to make these journeys, Arriva will have a replacement bus service. Please check online at ns.nl for precise information when planning your travels.
And finally tonight, the caves of St. Petersburg have been nominated as the nicest out outing of Limburg 2021. Twelve outings are on the list and members of the ANW Bay can now cast their votes. The twelve outings on the shortlist were selected based on price, quality, atmosphere and accessibility for the whole family. The winner will be announced early next year. And that's it for tonight. For more local news, you can follow RTV News in English on Facebook and Instagram. If you are a local business, be sure to check out the Support Your Local Business South Limburg Facebook page, a joint initiative between hashtags Maastricht and the Maastricht Edition. And if you want to discover events, concerts and cultural activities going on in Maastricht and the surrounding area, head on over to the website maastrichter.com to check out their awesome calendar of events. You can also follow them on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget that you can always find us on the Maastricht Edition Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, on Reddit and on Instagram. For all the details, check out the maastrichtedition.nl. Marvellous. Thank you, darling. Well there. done, our trace. Mm. So interesting news bits this evening. It's quite interesting yeah. about that city, the twin city in New Again. Mm. It's really bizarre. Yeah, I read about that. Yeah. Because uh, there's, there's this big thing in Poland at the moment where the there was the recent election in the last couple of weeks, and the, the guy who won the president, Duda, was being like saying lots of very anti -EGP, LGBT things yeah. like yeah. during his whole campaign, and now he's been mm -hmm. elected. And there's like this question about, well, is it safe to be LGBT in yeah. Poland? Like, what's going to happen? And it's a bit scary, to be honest, that in 2020, 2020 we have this situation, but yeah. there we are. There we are, indeed. There we are. And I tell you where we are as well. We are with Charlotte. We are. From the Broth Bar, who has joined us this evening. Hello, Charlotte. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, uh, we can hear you, but we can't see you at the moment. Oh, Jesus. Let's see if we can uh, get you up on the screen. It's always fun with Skype, isn't it? <laughs> it is. In the meantime, we can have a chat. Yes, meanwhile, a word from our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's here somewhere. Let's see if we can find her. Oh. Where is she? Yeah, you see me? No? No. And Where Charlotte, is, it's such a... I can see you up in the corner of my screen, oh, but I don't think you're on the full screen at the moment. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. Charlotte is such a lovely lady. It would be nice if we can see her. It would I'm be nice. here. But how are you, Charlotte? You're, you're coming through just fine, Charlotte. Uh, oh, well, that's okay. I can't see you. I don't know about if anybody else can, but that's all right. How are you, Charlotte? No? Have we lost her? I'm so sorry that my... Okay, hello. Good evening. There she is. I think we've got her at last. Okay, fine. Thank you. How are you guys? Great. Lovely to see you. We haven't seen you for quite a while. I think the last time you were on the show was probably about a year or so ago. Now, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm not hearing uh, Charlotte at the moment. Unfortunately not. Oh, dearie me. Technical issues. The bane of live shows. <laughs> I think maybe what we need to do is, um, is take Charlotte out of the call and maybe get her to come back in again. See if we can uh, get a better connection. It's maybe a good idea because Charlotte, as we know, is from the fabulous broth bar here in Maastricht, and it is a, such a popular spot. We really need to uh, be able to chat and hear all of the fabulous news she has to share. So, Charlotte, well, we're going to give you a call back in like two seconds, Charlotte, okay? So we're going to okay. hang up. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Yes, the, I know that the, the broth bar, very, very popular place in Maastricht. Really, yeah. And uh, it has been um, uh, continuing through uh, quarantine, mm -hmm. doing a roaring trade, which uh, I'm sure Charlotte will tell us all about when she uh, comes back to us. But um, uh, I, I think it was maybe about uh, two months ago, we did have a... Um, a whistle stop visit to uh, Maastricht and we went past the broth bar and uh, saw the little window 
that uh, uh, Charlotte has there. Oh, she's back with us. There Can she you hear is. us, Charlotte? Not yet. Can you hear us? We can see you. That's already an improvement. So <laughs> if only we could get the two things to work together, we'd be sorted. <laughs> can you hear us yet, Charlotte? Yes, I can. I can. Oh, fantastic. Welcome to the show, Charlotte. Lovely to have you with us. Oh, oh has she gone again? I'm sorry. I can't see my screen. I don't know. Oh, what a shame. We're really struggling with the connection this evening. Yes, I, I think so. But, uh, well, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you now. Yes. Just about, I think. <laughs> Maybe you could sit a little closer to the, to the uh, computer so that we can uh, get, get you a little better. No, I don't... Um, hmm. Anybody else hearing our Charlotte? No, yes. So Charlotte, tell us how you've been doing during the lockdown. We can you hear me? Yeah. Just about. Well, we've been doing really good. Yes, we have been, well, very innovative and we done really well. Oh, oh this is me. such a shame it's that she's really not coming through. No. Yeah, I think we're going to have to disconnect the call because unfortunately it doesn't seem to be working all that well. So we'll yeah. have to, I think we'll have to have Charlotte back on another another point in time oh that's such Absolutely. a shame charlotte um wh what we're gonna have to do is uh connect with you again during the week and see if we can sort out this technical issue um and uh, try and get you on uh, uh maybe next week or the week after if that's okay with you charlotte i understand sorry no don't problem sorry. don't worry no problem well we'll catch up again with you soon Oh, dear, that's such a pity. You, you know, our Charlotte, and we 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 all know and, and and love this lady. She could even do one of our extended YouTube interviews because she has so much information to share. And her her uh, restaurant and takeaway cafe is is uh, it's so popular. It's really really doing well. Yeah, and there's, a, there's a real focus on on healthy isn't there exactly yeah they're really in, and honestly they're they take it so seriously charlotte and tanya who are running the uh the show there um really and it's not just broth just in case people think you <laughs> get sued um this is one of the core things because broth you know they, there's there's so much goodness in it but they're also doing a lot of vegan stuff gluten-free and um you know like shots of special fruits and and things like that kombucha yeah. Yes, kombucha, which is the thing at the moment, isn't and it? And the fresh yeah. peanut butter. <gasps> oh, yes. yes. Do you remember that's last that. year when we did our Maastricht crawl? I remember. And we started off in the broth bar. What a great start. And we had breakfast there. We it had was pancakes. Like, uh, <laughs> it, oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> there was about 10 of us, if I remember rightly. And uh, and at the end of it, we all went up to the, the peanut butter machine with our little jars and filled it up with peanut mm -hmm. butter. That was so that. good. Yeah, it was so good. Yeah, but it, really, it's really good. And what's really great as well, uh, Charlotte and her team, they're, they're also enthusiastic. If you go in and you have, for example, if you're having trouble with a tummy or, or headaches or whatever, you know, you can kind of tell them I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling 100% at the moment. And they'll even sort of prescribe you uh, a meal or something yeah. to eat or something. It's wonderful. So a really yeah. great philosophy. And I'm so thrilled that they're one of the... Um, businesses that are still doing so well during this kind of self-imposed kind of lockdown and all of the issues that they're having to face. Yeah, yeah. we're getting a lot, a few messages actually coming through from Charlotte at the moment saying, oh. "I'm really, really sorry." Oh, so no, don't, sorry. don't worry, Charlotte. <laughs> Well, it's it's uh, different times at the moment having to do this and deal with technology and sometimes, you know, relying on Wi-Fi, it all goes a little bit wibble. But I'm sure we can sort it out and we'll get you on another time. Do not Absolutely. worry. So that being said, then, um, 
maybe somebody would like to ask me a question. Oh, okay, okay, I'll do it. Joe, oh, mm. I have an important question for you. What's that? What do you know this week that you didn't know last week? Well, it's funny you should <laughs> ask me that, Tracy. <laughs> Did you know that there is an old tradition in rural Austria which was for girls to dance with apple slices squeezed under their armpits, which would then be presented to a potential suitor. <laughs> OMG! I know. Delicious. If he reciprocated the feeling, <laughs> may I just take a bite of the sweaty slice? <laughs> I'm safe to say, mine got in Himmel. <laughs> oh my God! What, what on Just earth? Watch your language, young lady. <laughs> oh I, my God! You've I never had a salty it's... apple? Oh! <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like hot mayonnaise. Delicious. Wow! Well, uh -huh. good. Room Scott to that. In house, I always thought they just went up mountains to pick Edelweiss and they, the men would bring that back and present it to the girl they liked the most and it was all very nice with lederhosen and dirndl yurks and things. No, but, uh, no, 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 no. There's slices of apples stuck in somebody's armpit involved. Well, I mean, at least honestly, if they, they took a bite, you'd know they really liked you. Like, that's actually. true. And, and the you... men, yeah, the men would put orange slices in their bum. <laughs> Oh, maybe that's how the first orange juice got invented. <laughs> oh, <laughs> your question poses many possible answers. <laughs> let's let's not explore them. Oh. <laughs> well, well, maybe that's, that's where the apple strudel comes from. Oh, oh no, no, do not destroy <laughs> apple strudel for me. It's one of my most favorite desserts. <laughs> now we know why. <laughs> oh well. Oh, so, yeah, there you go. Well, that well, there are some very strange traditions out there. Very, very strange. Well, I, you know what? I'm sure if we investigated, did a bit on this next week, we would find some very curious local traditions across all of the European Matt, countries. Over to you. Matt, yes. <laughs> Actually, I do know one. Oh. I think I told you before that it was this tradition in medieval. I think it was medieval England for a woman if she wanted what was the to fish like. Story? Yeah, yes, the fish oh, story. No, I can't go through the fish like story. Like her love life, that she would go and catch a fish, and then she would um, insert it in her, mm -hmm, and keep it there a few days, and then she would roast it up and serve it to her husband, and they would have a lovely love life afterwards. Of course they would. <laughs> yeah. Good lord. They always After say the, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> but why are a woman? Maybe that's where it comes from. <laughs> Oh, oh, indeed. We're uncovering things. You talk about that conspiracy theory podcast. We've got our whole old one going on here. Okay. Well, wow. Oh, my goodness. Right. Well, that's, I'm not going to have fish for dinner today, that's for sure. <laughs> Neither is Dave. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> You're right about that, I tell you. <laughs> Do you know what I fancy? Although we're not in the studio at the moment, I do fancy a little bit of music. Oh. Do you? Yes. And I think um, the way we're going to get a bit of music on the show is if Matt goes dot, 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 dot. <laughs> music. Well, let, oh, exciting. Is Matthew going to uh, serenade us, Jim? Matt, Matt, Matthew apparently is going to tinkle the ivories. Well, there we well, are. That's also Look a custom it. in uh, uh, South Netherlands as well, uh, about tickling the ivories with orange slices. Uh, wait, right, Matt? Uh, no. <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't Could know. Let's no, go for the skins. Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot oh, to tell I you. About the, no, okay, we can talk about that later. Oh, what? oh uh, my God. <laughs> so so the, 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 the purpose of today's Matt goes dot, dot, dot is I'm going to play a piece of classical music, which you can legally play on Facebook. Yay. Oh, um, <laughs> and you have to guess from oh, which film right. it came from. So, okay, which piece he comes right. from a film, and you have to tell me which one. Okay. So, right. Right. We are. Like Mafia movies. Is it Godfather? No. 
Is it good fellas? No, it's not good fellas. Is it no, Chopin? No, no, no. <laughs> I don't I, actually I know this piece, song. But where is it from? I think it's... There's, uh, two, there's two possibilities. There's in two different films. One is quite recent. Right, yeah, I was going to say, because often these beautiful pieces of... And it has oh, Michael I honestly Douglas. don't know. Michael Douglas? Yeah. Well, recently, yeah, recently or the old one? Recently. Oh, I don't know any Michael Douglas films recently. He hasn't made anything recently, has but he? He plays a character that plays the piano. I think that's why the piece is in it. I see. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. From, from Behind the Candelabra, where Michael Douglas oh, plays a Oh, oh, yes, he was in Behind the Candelabra, was he? Yeah. Uh, right. oh my I've got I've got to join this game too here. I got to get in on this. Yeah, got to yeah. do. Do you know the answer? I was oh, about to say I behind the candelabra. By the way, that, that piece of music though, because he was he played lots of lively stuff. Yeah, do you know what that piece of music is? Anyone extra points? Uh, I'm no good at naming classical behind stuff. Behind the candelabra. No, I I thought it was something from Chopin, but it's probably it not. It's Chopin. Hey. Oh, hurrah! Points for me. There who you go. Who doesn't love <laughs> like, my piano teacher would be so proud. <laughs> I love, I love chopping. Yeah, I find chopping. it very yeah. difficult to remember the the names of pieces. Yeah, I do as well because that's called Prelude in E, e flat minor. It's yeah, e it's not by catchy. E. <laughs> no, they're not catchy names. But what was the movie it's from? Behind the Candelabra. It's like oh, a right. like... that is the movie. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. it's a really good part. movie. I've and never heard of it. Really, really good movie. Who's what was the? You said it was from two movies. Oh, the other one is a film I don't know called Five Easy Pieces. And it has you don't Jack know Nicholson. Five Easy Pieces? Oh, I also don't come know. Come on, man. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We'll let it go. We'll let it go. Okay. Right. Okay. Next one. This one's quite easy, I think. Okay. All right. The Kiss of Death. Let's see. <laughs> Chariots of Fire. <laughs> huh? It's the it's the science fiction movie. It's a science fiction oh, movie. Oh, oh, uh, 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 two thousand one Space Odyssey. One. Exactly. Right. There you go. All right. Yeah. Oh. I was too busy dancing. I'm sorry. Hey. Okay, <laughs> that's Richard Dreyfus, right? No. That's the no. other. Oh, right. That's the uh, Close Encounters you're thinking yeah. of. Oh. Yes, it's that's it. Sneeze. The Stanley Kubrick oh. film. Two thousand one right. with with the apes and the monolith and. That. Yeah. No, I'm not going to say. No. Oh, Sorry. Well, I'll carry on. Yeah, I'll keep in the piece. Right. Okay. Oh, it's, okay. A, it's a third one. Here we Next go. Next one. Make me dance. Let's go. Uh, I've got to find the book. <laughs> Goodness me. I do like Matt's piano. It's a rental. He's a, yeah. He's a cunning pianist. <laughs> This is a Anyone? tricky one. Is this a piece from Eric Satie? It is. Uh-huh. Oh, you're just showing off now. I'm... <laughs> Elena, it's Shikipedia number two, I think. Number one. <laughs> number one. Right. <laughs> Are you sure? Enough. No, Jason's getting on down with these bags. Oh, look. But I'm, I'm trying to... Um... Oh, I know the piece, but I just can't think what film it was in. It's is a French it, sounding film. Yes, is it from Emily? No. Oh, uh, it's a food. A food? Ratatouille. Chocolate. 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 Oh, oh with the. Chocolate. Yeah, with the very tasty Johnny Depp, who's actually in the news a lot at the moment. But. Uh, yeah, it but it, um, Le Petit Pois, then. It wasn't Le Petit Pois, mon douche, no. Wait, <laughs> wait. I like Chocolat. It's a very nice book as well. It is, from Grant it's Harris, great. actually. Yes. 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 Very nice. Yes. yes. Dame Judy's in the film. Dame Judy Dench. She yes. is. We love her. We okay. love See, Dame 
The next, woman next, next one. one. Thank you, Judy's listening this evening. We love you. I love Hello. You. Hi. There you go. Anyone? The trouble is, these are all very recognisable pieces, but yeah. I just don't know which movie they're in. I'm torn between Beethoven and Bach, but I don't know the movie. Well, that doesn't help. Chase is going all the classical music points, but what film was it in? Uh, it Toy Story. Toy Story, no. Yeah. It's Beethoven. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, it was, it was uh, Beethoven. Oh, that narrows it down then, doesn't it? Right. Pathetique. What? So it's a what? film by the Coon Brothers. Ooh. Oh, oh, sorry. Well, it's not Oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? Is it The Big Lebowski? No. Oh, no. That... Glorious what? Bastards. No. Fargo. No. It's uh, called The Man Who Wasn't There. Oh. I've never heard the, of it. The film that wasn't there. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Coen Brothers. Matt, it's been um, interesting. <laughs> so I Googled like 10 most well-known classical music pieces in film. And mm. these are the ones that came up. Oh. How many not that well-known? <laughs> no, I, I think the pieces of music are well-known. It's yes. just that the films aren't. Maybe so. I think you're right. But I, I like the new Matt dot 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 segment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm thinking it could be a new thing. You could play some songs from Weekend at Bernie's next week. I've never seen that movie, you know. Uh, don't bother. <laughs> no. Okay, right. I mean you bother I'm, because it's one of those eighty staples, but otherwise, yeah. But this weekend I'm going to watch that Eurovision movie with Will Ferrell. Uh, Good on you. Uh, has, has anyone watched it yet? Oh yeah. No, no. it's on Netflix, yeah. isn't it? Yes, on Netflix. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till Dave's not around because he'll just kill me. Yeah, <laughs> and then I'm gonna watch it alone. But yeah, I I, I have to see it. Apparently, if you love your vision, you gotta watch it. So definitely. Well, it's nearly time for the end of the show. Before we leave, Tracy, have you got any titty bitties for us? I have so many titty bitties. Right, get on with it then. I am overloaded with titty bitties. <laughs> you, you guys wow. drink your wine and beer and prosecco. I know. <laughs> uh, right. Well. Let me start. Uh, let me scroll down so I can find where I need to be. Scroll down to your now, best girl. That, first of all, very exciting news if you're living in Maastricht. There are going to be some open air concerts called the Borrel Noten, oh. take, taking place at the terrace of Café den Himmel in the Jaeger Court here. It started yesterday, 22nd of July, and they have events every night until 23rd of August. And it's basically different types of music from jazz to pop to classical, yay, to Mediterranean. And the event is being organized by the Cultura Mose with the goal to connect people and share different cultures. Nice. So, which is very nice. So it's a, uh, we'll post everything later so you can check that out. And this is very, very exciting. It's almost the highlight of my week. The fine folks at the Lumiere Cinema in Maastricht are getting ready to bring us an open air film festival. Oh! Isn't that exciting? From the 19th until the 29th of August. There's more details still to come, but do stay tuned and mark the agendas. The program of movies is still to be um, finalized, but it's set to be a wonderful mix of films. Films, and all of the movies will be shown outdoors in the inner garden behind the Lumiere building. Mm. I think is, I'm thinking team outing, but let's see how that goes. Next to that, I'm delighted to be able to bring you a little segment of weekly event highlights courtesy of Hashtag Maastricht. And these are the folks who are in the know for lifestyle, lifestyle tips and fun in the city. So this week, we're zooming in on the following events. Now, Bernard's Dance Centre is opened again, and it's great to just go along to do a bit of dancing or to take a lesson. But this Saturday, 25th of July, you can sign up to go along and dance with your partner, enjoy a little bite and also have a drink and they've got all of the 1.5 meter distancing rule between couples and everything but it should make for a lot of fun these are i've been one time and it's really a, a if you get over your self-consciousness about i can't dance then you're good to go <laughs> it's all fine yeah, if yeah. you if you feel you need a cocktail after this <laughs> You could go to the new uh, location, Salmon, which is on the Hunderstraat. And this is a new concept owned by a Belgian couple. Basically, what you do is you tell the bartender what sort of drinks and tastes you like, and they mix you a cocktail accordingly. Oh. Nice, huh? 
I, I, fabulous. And they also do some food as well, which is apparently really good. And last but not least, um, if you want to try some Asian dishes and drinks uh, for a really good price, you can go to the Dadawan, which is across the street from Maastricht Central Station. They have sushi, poke bowls and lots of really nice, tasty dishes. Um, and they also have a lot of people there who are speaking in English. So it makes for a very and easy. And robots. And robots. Oh, well. is that the robot place? That's yeah. the robot place. Oh, and while, oh. while you're there, I'm going to do a little personal shout out to the restaurant next door, which is the Wen Chow Chinese restaurant who do fabulous dim sums and always guarantee a great friendly welcome. So there's lots of foodie things that you can try out this weekend. Fantastic. Nice one, Trace. You're welcome. I nope. really fancy nope. going to the robot place. I know. I really fancy going to the Lumiere Open Air Film Festival. <laughs> so, I really yeah, fancy just leaving the house. Yeah. yeah. Really. I hear you. I yeah, hear you. I have to confess, I, I like the idea of all these things, but it's not, I'm, I'm not going to get there because I'm just going to have my open air festival in the garden <laughs> with my sweet peas. Absolutely. You're set. You've got your sweet peas. You've got your Prosecco. You've got your husband. You're good to go. <laughs> Exactly. What more could I wish for? Goats. <laughs> Never mind. Right. And just so go. that's it. I'm afraid, folks. We're at the end of the show. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been lovely to have you with us. Um, thank you to uh, all the guys and girls uh, um, in the back of uh, the Maastricht Edition, our Maastricht Edition team, who have made this possible, and yeah. to RTV, who have yeah. also helped to make this possible. Um, have a lovely weekend, whatever it is that you're doing out there. We hope to see you again next week. Uh, we'll sort things out with Charlotte. Yes. So uh, we will definitely get her back on the show. Um, uh, sorry again for little technical issues. Oh, lovely Sylvina. She's only just joined us. She's sending us lots of pictures of flowers at the moment. Oh, but unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of the show, Sylvina. So we'll see you next time. And we'll see everybody else next week as well. Thanks ever so much. See yep. you soon. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.